Hi there, thanks very much for watching. Welcome to Snowmageddon. Hmm, probably not. Some areas of the United Kingdom have had half a metre of snow, but certainly not here. Um, the ice has stopped me moving though. Um, I knew the ice was coming. Um, I knew the temperatures were going to go, go down, as most people that live on narrowboats do. They sort of keep an eye on the weather. So I moored up here, got the, the car close by. The ice is probably about six centimetres thick at the moment. Over the last few days, about four days ago, it started icing over and the first night was really noisy. Um, there's nothing you can do because as the ice froze and you move in the boat or the wind moves the boat back and forward, there was scratching and crunching and all sorts. It was a bit of a restless night that was. But as the ice got thicker, now um, Alice is rock solid in the ice. Um, regardless of how much you move around in the boat, it's like actually living on land again. Um, the ice is, is solid around it, although it is starting to melt already. I can sort of hear crunching noises again. So it won't be long, probably in the middle of the next week that I will carry on moving towards the Shropshire Union Canal. But for now, I have been working inside. Um, I've been building this electrics cupboard that I'm going to be putting all this equipment in. Um, I've had the Victron lithium batteries for just over a week now. Very, very different. I haven't needed to charge the batteries using the generator. I haven't needed to charge the batteries using the engine and the alternator at all. Solar has done it all. Now, considering many days are a bit like this, dull and overcast, not much sun, the solar has been coping really, really well. Um, the other bonus is the fact that I've got my fridge back on, inside, on 24-7. No problems whatsoever. Yesterday, when building the electrics cupboard, I um, was cutting using a jigsaw, uh, mains jigsaw from the inverter, 700 watt jigsaw, no problems whatsoever. No engine running, nothing needed. Lithium batteries are like, yeah, whatever. Um, the actual voltage didn't change at all. And after about an hour, an hour and a half of me on and off using it, the percentage hadn't changed even 1%, which is fantastic. So what have I been doing whilst the ice has, has stopped me from going anywhere? Well, I've been cracking on with the cupboard inside. That's where all my electrics are going to go. And it's been quite tough because the, the boat tapers in at that point. So I've had to chop the back of the cupboard off and, and bring the, the rear of the actual cupboard in as well as add vents and things. So let's see how I've been getting on. I've decided to use a normal one metre wide kitchen cabinet as I wanted it to blend in with the rest of the kitchen. It's at the far end of the port side of Alice. Below the cupboard, I lifted a section of the floor and removed some of the brick ballast. On the bulkhead to the engine bay, there is a hole. It's normally used to route cables and pipework. It's big enough for me to also include a ventilation duct between the cupboard and the engine bay where there is plenty of external ventilation. In the engine bay I will be fitting an inline blower. On the command of a temperature switch this will suck warm air from the cupboard outside. In turn this will pull cool air up from the bilge below the cupboard. This not only replaces hot air with cool but it also keeps the bilge nicely ventilated. The three lithium batteries are positioned to the left of the cupboard and to the right the Victron Multiplus inverter and charger. This has lots of good ventilation around it, plus as this is the item that gets the hottest, the cool bilge air vent is right in front of it. 
After watching my last video, a really helpful guy from Victron got in contact and highlighted there were some changes regarding the temperature environment. The latest data sheet from Victron for my lithium batteries has been updated to recommend charging from 5 degrees Celsius and above. I expect this has been changed to avoid confusion and to lengthen the lifespan of the batteries. But it just goes to show, lithiums don't like being charged at low temperatures. Talking of charge, it was time to complete my initial lithium battery charge. The manual states they come approximately 50% charge, and as they're smart batteries, I could see via Bluetooth and the Victron Connect app on my phone the voltage of each of the battery cells and the battery temperature. That was before they even came out of their boxes. I could see each battery required a firmware update. This was all done using the app. I charged each battery for its initial charge separately. Before I do that, however, I needed to update the firmware on the MultiPlus's VE bus. This adds functionality to work with lithium batteries. This is not for the faint of heart and needs a thorough understanding of what you're doing. If in any doubt, I strongly recommend you ask a Victron engineer to complete this next stage for you. The firmware version will reset your MultiPlus back to its default settings, and if you use the wrong firmware version, you can damage the MultiPlus. But in the true spirit of Journey with Jono, here's how I did it. I downloaded and installed the latest VE Flash software from the Victron website. I've included links in the description below. When you remove the front cover of the MultiPlus, you'll see the main circuit board. On the front of the large chip to the top left of the board, there is a sticker with a seven digit number. As you can see, mine starts with 2609. Write that number down. At the bottom right of the MultiPlus, there is a label with the serial number. It starts with HQ. Contact your Victron representative with both numbers and ask for the correct firmware file. I made sure there were no other items connected to the MultiPlus. I downloaded and ran the VE Flash software and chose Update the Firmware. I followed the software commands and selected the correct firmware version. It's important to ensure the first four digits of the firmware file are the same as the first four digits of the label on the chip. In my case, it was 2609. I auto-selected the port that the USB communicates on and turned the MultiPlus off. I connected a network cable to one of the MultiPlus's network ports. Using a Victron MK2 to USB interface, I connected it to the network cable from the MultiPlus and plugged the MK2 into the computer's USB port. I then switched the MultiPlus on and the software recognised it and started to upload the firmware file to the chip. After a few nail-biting moments, the firmware was fully updated. Phew, time for some nice snow scene shots to lower the stress levels. I then downloaded and installed VE Configure. The purpose of this software is to communicate with the MultiPlus, tell it I now have lithium batteries and also add a small program to it called an assistant. After running the VE Configure and connecting to the MultiPlus, I navigated to the Charger tab. As you can see, the MultiPlus was configured for flooded deep discharge batteries. Clicking the battery type button, I selected lithium iron phosphate. It updates the MultiPlus to the following settings. As this was the first time I was charging the batteries, Victron recommend you charge at a lower rate of C divided by 20 or less, or 5% of a 100 amp hour battery, which is 5 amps in my case. So I changed the charge to 5. It also recommended to give the batteries an absorption voltage of 14.2 volts for several hours to initially fully balance the cells, so I changed the absorption time from 1 to 3. Next I clicked on the Assistance tab. 
I clicked the Add Assistance button and selected VE Bus BMS from the drop down menu. Once it was installed, I clicked the Start Assistant button. The battery management system from Victron communicates with the MultiPlus, and in low battery voltage situation, it changes the MultiPlus from inverting to charger only. In a high battery voltage situation, it regulates the charge voltage to allow for the cells to fully balance. The VE Bus BMS Assistant was then fully installed. That's all the settings I needed to change, so I clicked the Send Settings button to the left of the main area, selected Modified Settings and the changes and the new BMS Assistant were sent to the MultiPlus. I connected one battery at a time to the MultiPlus and started the charging. I purposely moored up away from other boats and houses. As the charge amperage was only 5 amps, I knew I would need to run my generator a long time. Each of the batteries were luckily around 60% full to start with, but it did take a good 8 to 9 hours for each battery to increase in voltage and charge. I kept a close eye on each of their charges using the Bluetooth Victron Connect app. The charge seemed to go up to around 14.17 volts and around 3.6 volts for each cell. They stabilised and then started to drop. I knew then that the batteries were full. Two days later I connected them in parallel to my Victron Power In panels, which I'm using as covered bus bars. I'll be discussing those and my new battery monitor in my next episode. Until then, see you later.